This is the Giglio Feast of Brooklyn, and we're going to try to prove to you that this may be the best feast in Italian America. It's one of Brooklyn's most sacred summer traditions, with roots that go back centuries. And in a city famous for its varied Italian feasts, we like to say that the dancing of the Giglio is when heaven touches Brooklyn in July. We've got everything you'd expect on your Italian feast checklist. Incredible food, games, squeaky rides, cigars, and a grand procession through the old neighborhood. But at the Feast of the Giglio, that's really just the beginning. And if you've made a mid-July visit to the streets of Williamsburg sometime in the past hundred plus years, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You might ask where such a magnificent tradition began and what could possibly encourage hundreds of men to return each year to carry this monumental four-ton tower through the sweltering heat of Brooklyn's blacktop. It was like carrying feathers because it's our fate. Our our fate helps us carry this monument. The Giglio is not just a feast about neighborhood pride, about our faith. There's an actual specific history to this. If you look at the top of the Giglio, you see San Paulinus of Nola, Bishop of Nola, a town south of Naples in Italy. And San Paulino was known as a very devoted and very great leader. And during the dark times in the wars between Christianity and Islam, Turkish pirates used to come to the shores of southern Italy and and kidnap kids to bring them into slavery. So when all of the children and the women of the village of Nola were brought into slavery, San Paulino went to sacrifice himself and speak to the leadership of the states of the North Africa and offered to give himself over in exchange for the kids of the village. Word of the bishop's courageous and selfless act spread, and luckily for San Paulino, was particularly impressive to a Turkish potentate in North Africa who released the captives and escorted the newly appointed bishop back to Nola, where he was greeted by an overwhelming display of Nolani, waving lilies to welcome him home. In Italian, we call the lily il Giglio. The word Giglio means lily in Italian, and it represents the time when St. Paulinus in the fourth century gave his life as ransom for the children and women that were captive by pirates, and when he returned with the captives, the people in the town of Nola greeted him with lilies. And the lilies then became a symbol of St. Paulinus and the statue that they build in his honor, so they call it the Giglio. In the 1950s, the annual celebration merged with the similarly timed feast of Our Lady of Mont Carmel, and is today celebrated with every bit of vigor and energy that one might expect from a WrestleMania. A ceremonial Turk is chosen to lead the boat symbolizing Paulinus' legendary return to Nola. And a group of capos and lifters, called paranze, are assembled to carry the guests of honor and the feast band, who serenade the faithful with the official feast hymn, O Giglio e Paradiso. But perhaps the feast's highest honor is the decades-long journey to earn the spot of number one capo the man who will decide the feast's colors and overall theme, and more importantly, shout the complex commands that will guide the congregation along the route to its ultimate destination, a reunion and dance with the Turk and his ship. My name is Anthony Croce and I've been waiting 28 years for this. I'm the number one capo. Become the capo, it takes a a lot of hard work to get in the line, and then the line takes a lot of years to become the number one man. Like many of our most cherished traditions, the Festa del Giglio made its way to the shores of the United States along with a wave of Italian immigrants during the latter part of the 19th century. And because so many of our forebearers from in and around Nola settled in the Williamsburg section of Brooklyn, the Giglio became a neighborhood staple and an annual celebration that Italian Americans from near and far now proudly pass on through the generations. I did it for 18 years. My son now takes over. So we keep it within our family. It's just a a tradition. It's an Abilidan tradition. We couldn't wait for this day to come. My cousin's been waiting for 30 years for this to happen. So you start out like a lower, then you go up the ranks, and now, today, he's finally number one. I wish my parents would be here to share it, and and we're going to have a good day. 
la vittoria va! All right, guys, we made it to the roof of the rectory of Our Lady of Mount Carmel for the best seat in the house, for the biggest moment of this feast, the double dance. That's when the Giglio meets the Turks. It's going to be amazing. This is an unbelievable view. You cannot appreciate the Giglio in Brooklyn unless you have seen it yourself with your own eyes. It is a phenomenon, and it's very much worth the trip. For me, this is a homecoming to my old neighborhood. I was born a few blocks from here, and from when I was a little kid, Every time I hear that song, O Giglio e Paradiso, I get chills, the hairs on my neck stand up. This really is one of the best feasts in the world, and guys, I think we're going to enjoy the rest of it, some from here, and then uh, back down to enjoy a full night of feasting. I'm glad I get to watch this with my best friends. Oh, thank you, Ro. Let's enjoy it. Come on. Wow, right. It's a big moment coming I didn't coming see up. that one coming. <laughs> we didn't rehearse that. Wow. <laughs>